is a member of the Bolt Hall class of 1970. Today he is a well-known attorney here in Northern California. He is also a frontline activist going back to the free speech movement, People's Park, anti-war and anti-every other injustice since then. Please welcome Dan Siegel. Uh, whenever I show up at Bolt Hall, I always uh, remember that when I started here in 1967, I was always a lot prouder of the fact that I had joined the Lawyers Guild than that I was a student at Bolt Hall. And uh, that feeling came upon me in October of 67 when I went down as a uh, legal observer to stop the draft leak. came back to class with my head broken open and bleeding. I have to admit I didn't make a big effort to wash it off. When I went to class and tried to get my uh, criminal law teacher to talk about the practice of criminal law in the streets of Oakland as opposed to the various Latinisms that were being taught to describe the principles of criminal law. Things haven't changed very much. I am incredibly frustrated and angry that Dean Chris Edley, who professes support for civil rights, human rights, and justice, continues to head a faculty with a war criminal who sits here teaching constitutional law. Sorry, John, you. And Edley needs to be held accountable just as you does. There is little doubt, there is little doubt that John Yu is a war criminal. Some people attempt to uh, bastardize the conversation by talking about it as though we're discussing constitutional rights, as though the guy wrote a law review article and just came, uh, happened to stand up for an unpopular view. That is not what happened. That is the wrong analysis of what happened. John Yu went to Washington on leave from his job here at Bolt Hall and created the ideological, political, and legal basis for the torture of innocent people and for the repudiation of constitutional principles as well as the U.S.'s treaty obligation. That was, was his job. Now, when we say that John Yu is a war criminal, we don't say that because we disagree with his opinions or think he should be punished in violation of academic freedom. What we say is, is that the principles that were established after World War II in the Nuremberg trials regarding the responsibility of attorneys who provided the ideological and jurisdictional basis for the atrocities of the Nazi government could themselves be prosecuted for war crime. And for those of you uh, who have access to law books, it's United States versus all Stoddard, pre-TWC 1948. That's what John Yu did. He not only advocated for unitary executive power. He argued that the uh, Geneva Accords, to which the United States is a signatory, do not apply. He argued for this absurd definition of torture, which has since been repudiated not only by Democrats, but by the Republican lawyers who succeeded him in the office of legal counsel uh, after he finally left the position. There can be little doubt about the fact that John Yu is a war criminal. He should be prosecuted. He must be, must be prosecuted. Equally, perhaps, as important is he needs to be fired from his job. Yeah. 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 I say that. You know, there's a document called the Faculty Code of Conduct, which applies to all faculty members at the University of California. And it sets forth grounds of discipline for behavior that is unacceptable. And one of the major grounds for behavior that is not acceptable is when an individual who is a faculty member, whether in residence or on leave, commits an act which does damage to the reputation and academic standing of this university. And advocacy and participation of war crimes, as far as I know, is something that is not quite uh, beloved here at the university, although some might differ. And for historical precedent, back in 1971, there was a guy in the political science department here at Berkeley named Robert Scalapino. 
Now, for those of you who are younger than me, you may not recall who Robert Scalapino was. Scalapino was the architect of what was called the Phoenix Program in Vietnam. Oh, He's God. the one who suggested the one way to win the hearts and minds of the Vietnamese people is to send assassins into villages where the NLF, where the Viet Cong was influential and murder the village leaders as though that would be a lesson to the Vietnamese <laughs> that they better not hang around with those bad guys. Well, you know what happened with that strategy. Uh, the Vietnamese didn't buy it. And in 1971, students at Berkeley disrupted the classes of Robert Scalapino, making the argument that we should be making here is that war criminals have no right to teach. War criminals have no right to be paid by your tuition funds, by taxpayers' funds, to work for this public institution, which has as its founding principle advancing the well-being of people in the state of California. So I'm hoping that if Dean Edley doesn't get wise, and the powers that be here don't get wise soon enough, that our next demonstration will be inside of John Hughes' oh, class. Yeah. Yeah. And I will be there to argue that he has no right to teach in the University of California. Yeah. You out of Berkeley! 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 Shame on you! 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 Okay, next I would like to introduce Ann Weil. She is a distinguished civil rights attorney and another lifetime fighter for justice. She stepped up to the front lines in the 60s in the free speech and the civil rights movement and the women's movement.